Welcome to this short video to help you use the equipment here in the gym safely and effectively. There's a gym etiquette poster on the wall which details the sort of things you should consider whilst you're in here, the main essence of which is being considerate to your fellow gym users. Two key points on there are the wiping down of equipment after use and the tidying up of any free weights or anything that you might have used so other gym users don't trip over them and generally leave the gym in the sort of condition you'd hope to find it in when you arrived. Okay, so I will now take you through the various pieces of equipment in the gym and how to use them. Okay, so cross trainer, really good low impact machine. So if you have some injuries, dodgy knees or anything like that, then this is lovely and smooth and this would be the one to choose. Um, it's a little bit like a cross country skiing motion. So you have to be slightly careful when you step on it because the foot, foot plates will move when you do so. So hold the handle and pop your feet in the middle of the foot plates and jump up on. And then to start the display, you need to start sort of sk a skating motion to get the machine moving and light up the display. So push your feet forward and the display will light up. You then push start. Start again. Just give it a sec and the machine begins. Key thing to um, adjust on here is the resistance on the front wheel. So obviously if you increase the resistance on the front wheel, it makes your motion much more difficult. And there's a plus and a minus button on the display that you do that with. Push the plus increases the resistance and the minus will decrease the resistance and then the only other thing you really think about on here are the two different handle positions so you have these in the middle here which are static so that that means you're only using your lower body and you can bring in your arms for a bit more of an all-round kind of body workout in which case you hold these handles as well and you assist by pulling and pushing with your arms as well as skating with your legs and then away you go Okay, so treadmill, step up onto the belt. First thing to remember is to attach the cutoff clip. So you clip that to your clothing so it's securely fastened. And then if you stumble or fall or anything during your run or walk, then it pulls this little red tag off and stops the belt instantly to avoid you um, injuring yourself. So all clipped on, stand in the middle of the belt and push start. There's a slight delay and it gives you a little countdown on the display and then the belt takes a second or two and then will automatically move after you've pushed start. To increase the speed, there's two speed arrows, one points up, which increases your speed, so you push that, and obviously the belt speed will increase. If you hold your finger down on it, obviously it speeds up more quickly. And again, to lower your speed, the down arrow, you can gradually bring your speed back down manually. The other thing that adjusts on here is the gradient. So you can simulate um, hill walking, for example, and there's an incline button for that. You push the up arrow and the front of the treadmill literally moves up, so you're, you're walking up a hill. Obviously that makes things a bit more, more difficult. And the down arrow lowers the gradient back down to level. The only other thing to remember on here is obviously stopping. So when you come to the end of your, your run, you can push the stop button and the belt will stop nice and gradually. Or if you're to injure yourself, pull a hamstring or something, you grab the handles and straddle the belt. So you're in a safe, secure position off of the moving bit of the machine and then push stop and the belt will slowly stop. Okay, so Concept2 rower, excellent piece of kit this one. First thing to adjust is the resistance and that is controlled by a big fan on the front of the machine. Uh, it, it, at the moment it's left in one, which makes the resistance low, so it's easier to row when it's down on number one. And this slides all the way up to number 10, which is obviously much more difficult. To closely simulate outdoor rowing, and, and the resistance is involved in that really, you have it between six and seven. Um, so that sets your resistance. Next thing, very important, strapping your feet in. So you pop your feet in and back against the heel rest and this strap should go right across the widest bit of your foot. So actually that's a little bit too low for me. To adjust it, you pull that forward and it slides up, clips in, pop your foot in and then the strap goes neatly across the wide bit of my foot and you pull that nice and tight because at some point when you're rowing you flex against that to spring back and do your next stroke. So obviously you do the same for both feet and strap those in. Next up, grip on the bar. 
um, when you naturally grab the bar, you sort of tend to grab it in your fist like that. But actually for rowing, you try and have a bit of a claw grip. So you want to have the bar just in the end of your fingers like that. And in so doing, you maximize the length of each stroke you do by another inch or two. So it means to go the same distance, you need to do just slightly fewer strokes. So that is the grip like that. And then the actual rowing technique, drive with your legs, pull with your arms, back with your arms, back with your legs. Legs, arms, arms, legs, back nice and flat and slow and steady like that. Up on the front, your main display. So you jump on, push menu and then just row and it will go to a default simple screen like this and it has the time at the top that counts you up from zero so you can row for whatever duration you've chosen. In the middle is your rate and that gives you a time or a figure for how fast you would row 500 meters. So the lower that big figure is, the faster and more effective your rowing stroke is. So if you run, um, if you row 500 meters in three minutes, you're going much more slowly than someone that rows 500 meters in two minutes, for example. And they are the two key things, time at the top, intensity in the middle, and then you just run a uh, row for your chosen duration and then stop when you're finished. Okay, so recumbent cycle, similar to a normal bike, but obviously you're seated with a nice back support and you kind of pedal out in front of you. Key thing to adjust initially is the seat distance from the pedals. So to test you've got the correct distance, you sit on the seat, pop your foot in the pedal and make sure that pedal is as far away from you as possible. At that point, your knee should just have a slight bend in it. Actually, that's a little bit too close to me. So to adjust that, there's a little yellow lever under here and you pull that up and it's on a nice slider. Slide that back and it locks in and you test again pop your foot in the pedal, push the pedal as far away as possible, and that leaves me with a slight bend in the knee, so I'm at the correct distance from the, from the pedals. Pop both your feet in, and just begin pedaling very slowly. The display will then light up for you. Push start, it beeps, and then counts you up from zero, so you can cycle for as long or short a time as you would like. The other key thing to adjust on here is the resistance level. So you can make it much harder to pedal by increasing the resistance on the wheel at the front. There's arrows here on the display. Push the up arrow to increase resistance. So a brake, uh, brake squeezes the wheel and makes it much harder to pedal. And a down arrow takes the resistance off. And then you just sit back with your back rested against the seat, hold the handles at the side, and off you go. Okay, so spin bike, two or three things to adjust on this one. First up, handlebar height. Um, that would vary slightly depending on your cycling level, but we will put it to a kind of default setting, which is ideal for the bog standard gym user. So handlebar height firstly, undo this and it pulls out, and this is on a slider. And you set that to number six. It's a little bit stiff, and you've got to make sure it clunks in like that and tighten that up so that's nice and sturdy. The number six I'm talking about is on a little handy dial thing here. So that's your handlebars in the standard position. Saddle distance from handlebars next. That's on a bit of a slider so you can adjust distance from the handlebars. Under there you unscrew that and that's on a slide like that. And the bog standard setting for that is flush at the end so you don't have it too far forward, not too far back just so it meets there nicely. Tighten that back up, so that's nice and sturdy. <clears throat> One thing you absolutely must adjust every time you use a spin bike is a saddle height, and that is very specific to the individual user. So to test that that is at the correct height, you sit on the saddle and lower the pedal to its lowest point. And when it is right down, there should be just a slight angle at the knee. That is way too much of an angle at the knee, so I need to lift the saddle. To do that, similar um, dial on the back, unscrew and then it pulls up, back in and tension that back up so it's nice and sturdy again. Sit on the seat, foot in and then when the pedal's fully lowered there's just a slight angle at the knee. Okay, so we're all adjusted perfectly, pop both feet in and very gently begin to pedal. Um, the spin bike has a weighted wheel at the front so 
you can't just stop suddenly and freewheel. If you try and stop suddenly, you can't, and the wheel will continue moving and pull you about a little bit. So you do need to be slightly aware of that. So you build up very slowly, and then to slow down, you slow down very gradually by gently slowing your pedal rate down. Resistance on the front wheel can be adjusted, and that obviously makes it much harder to pedal or more easy. There's a dial on here with red dial with a plus arrow. Twist it towards the plus, and it increases the resistance on the front wheel and makes it much harder to pedal. And towards the minus, we'll take the resistance off and make it easier to pedal. A couple of different handlebar positions. So a more upright conventional position like that, or down into a more of a sort of speed cycling position. That again is a comfort thing and you can vary between the two positions whilst you're cycling. Lastly, if you do hurt yourself and need to stop um, more suddenly, you push down on the red button and it puts a fierce brake on the wheel and stops you very quickly so you can safely get off the bike and you're all done. Okay, so concept two, ski erg. So you're supposed to simulate cross country skiing, particularly the arm bit of cross country skiing. Key thing to adjust on here is the resistance, and again, that is governed by the fan at the bottom here. That has a slider and numbers one to 10. 10 obviously is the hardest and has the most resistance, so obviously, if you're feeling particularly strong, leave it on 10, but generally, you would have it somewhere in the middle um, and give it a go at that rate. So, next up, step onto the plate, hold the handles. Step away a little and make sure your feet are shoulder width apart and you're nice and firmly positioned. You then have your arms at a 90 degree angle and you pull simultaneously on both handles and flex a little at the knees. So you have a nice flat back. Ski along in that motion. You can also do single arms. And on the display in front of you, which will light up automatically as soon as you pull the handles. It has your time at the top, which you start at zero and then you can um, ski along for as long as you might wish. And your rate or intensity is the number just below that. Okay, so cable machine, a few different things to adjust on here and lots of different exercises that you can do on it. First things first, adjusting the weight stack. So that has a pin that pulls out and slots in. And that is on a really light weight. Obviously, when you just get started, you want to start on a nice light weight to warm yourself up. Many of the exercises use both handles, and this has two separate weight stacks. So obviously, if you are using both handles, you need to make sure the weight is exactly the same on each weight stack. Another thing to adjust are these housings here, and they're on a slider. So you can adjust the height of the whole thing. Pull that out and it slides up and down and clicks in. So it should make that sort of quite loud clicking noise and then you know it's secure. Again, you can use um, just one side, but if you do use two sides, this is also on a similar housing and you've got to make sure it's at exactly the same height on both sides. So you're going to be exercising evenly. Another thing to adjust on here are the actual attachments and there's a couple of different attachment types that you can choose and they correspond with whichever exercise you might have chosen. To adjust it, Push that in and unclip. It's on like a little shackle clip there. And then push it and clip it back in. Make sure that's closed nicely. And um, the, the key element of this really is, is whichever exercise you have chosen, you must be familiar with the safe technique for that particular exercise. So you know how to reproduce that exercise with perfect technique to avoid injury. Got a lovely functional training area in this gym. Lots and lots of different bits of kit on here hundreds of exercises you can do with it. Whichever exercise you have chosen, please make sure you are familiar with the safe technique for that particular exercise. Do one exercise at a time, and when you have completed that exercise, pop the piece of kit back on the rack so your fellow gym user doesn't trip over it. Also in here is a dumbbell rack. Same rules with that. So one pair of dumbbells off at a time, do your exercise, and then replace them on the rack. Whichever exercise you did with the dumbbells, make sure you know the safe technique for that as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you do have any questions or require any additional information, please speak to your accommodation manager.